Um, thanks so much for joining us today. So um, like she said, I am a consultant with PwC. Um, I have a background in marketing strategy. I worked in um, industry for a number of years. In the past couple of years, been doing consulting as well. So today we are going to talk a little bit about marketing strategy. We're going to spend the bulk of our time talking about the importance of marketing strategy, as well as how to create impactful customer-led marketing strategies. And we'll touch a little bit on determining and measuring ROI as well as identifying when to make changes to your marketing strategy. So as I said, I am a consultant, so I am gonna try to make this as least consultant-y as possible, um, but we do have a lot of information, a lot of really good information to go through. So I will say this, um, I'm gonna try to get through it as quickly as possible, I know we only have 30 minutes, um, but if there is anything that you have questions about, um, feel free to raise your hands. I want to make sure that we um, articulate everything that we're going to go through today. So, all right. So, given the fact that we are coming up on a new year soon, I wanted to throw this in here. Um, this is one of my favorite Marketunist cartoons um, talking about marketing resolutions. Um, and I know we're coming up on a new year. This is something that I feel like as marketers, we do a lot of, right? We talk about how we are going to create this awesome strategy. We're gonna create this awesome marketing plan. It's gonna have um, these various elements that are so important to our plan. And then what happens? Some competitor comes along, does something, and we, we say to ourselves, ooh, I wanna do that too. Or someone says some new technology comes out, and you're like, oh, I wanna do that too. That sounds awesome but we're not really focused on what we've said that we're going to achieve. So that's a little bit about what we're gonna talk about today. All right, the importance of marketing strategy. I was really excited when they asked me to talk about this. I love marketing strategy. Um, I actually work in the customer group for PwC is what we call it, um, where we focus on marketing, pricing, sales, all of that. One of the uh, main focuses that I wanted to talk about today is that um, PwC, we recently did a survey. I wanted to talk about this. So we did a survey of 161 global cross-industry executives. So these are executives at global firms um, across the globe. And we were asking them about how they felt about their marketing strategies, how they felt about um, how they're engaging with customers um, to try to examine how well they understood customer marketing strategies and what were their best practices or their common pitfalls. After we did this 161 um, company survey, we also did an in-depth analysis of about 30 additional companies, excuse me, 30 of those companies within that 161 to pinpoint, like I said, their best practices or their common pitfalls. So we asked them various questions about how they felt like they were doing from a marketing strategy perspective, um, what the most important elements of their marketing strategy were, and one of the main questions we asked was, what do you see as, your most, as being most important for your marketing strategy? They came back with a number of different answers. And before I give you those answers, I actually wanna open it up to the crowd a little bit and ask you, what do you see as being the most important element of a marketing strategy? Most important element of a marketing strategy. Go ahead. Uh, brand continuity. Brand continuity. That's a great answer. Results. Others? Sorry, I heard something. Results. Results. So, what are so basically achieving your goal? Yeah. Awesome. Target audience. Target audience. That's very good. Very good. Others? Execution. Mm -hmm. Tying tie into sales. Tying tie into sales goals. Yep. So again, going back to that achieving the results, achieving that revenue goal that you got, have heard. How much of passion for your customer? Passion for your customer, I think that's important. Yeah. Others? All right. I think you guys hit on a number of them that these global C-suite executives talked about, but I'm gonna show you the ones that they chose as being the highest respondents. So most important elements of their strategy, segment and targeting, I think someone talked about that targeting over here. 70%, 72% said that was most important. Customer experience, followed by channel strategy, go-to-market strategy, and product strategy. And 
it was a little bit of a trick question. And we got, the reason we got these number of responses back was because it was a little bit of a trick question. And the truth is, is that all of these are, while important elements of a marketing strategy, the most common pitfall of these responses is that it's incoherent. It's not a cohesive strategy. It's not encompassing all of the elements that are important to be able to make a successful strategy. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. We're gonna talk about the 10 um, attributes that we have identified that will help you to develop a strong and successful marketing strategy. But before I dive into that, I just wanted to bring this up. So this is um, something that PwC came up with um, once we were doing these um, surveys and this analysis of these customers. So it's at its core, a customer or marketing strategy must define the distinctive value proposition. So I wanna point out that that's one point. And the experiences that a company provide, experiences being two, that a company provides to its target customers, three, and coordinate the various functions, four, skills, five, and channels needed to deliver on that promise. So when you're developing a cohesive marketing strategy, it has to have all of these different elements. Um, and these are just part of the strategic elements of your marketing strategy. I'm also gonna talk about some enabling elements of your marketing strategy as well. So I wanna take a quick step back before we dive into these attributes. And I want to, because I know that with all of the different people in the room, with all of our different varying experiences, we all might see strategy a little bit differently, right? We all might say, well, a strategy is this length, you know, involves this length of time, or a strategy is focused on this element of marketing. But if we're gonna talk about a cohesive strategy, I just wanna make sure that we're sort of all on the same page, if you will. So from our perspective, a marketing strategy is essentially a roadmap. It's a roadmap to get you from point A to point B. There's a number of people that talked about the common elements of a marketing strategy being to meet a certain goal, or whether it be a revenue goal, or a, um, whether it be a, a market goal, trying to make sure that you're getting in front of enough customers. You might have a goal, but your strategy is essentially your roadmap to get to that point. So for instance, for example, if you have a goal over the next five years to say that you are going to double your revenue, that's your goal for your company. Your marketing strategy is gonna be your roadmap to help you get there. A lot of times people also um, mistake that with the marketing plan as well. And a marketing plan would be something that you're going to focus on probably on a yearly basis that's very tactical to get to um, help you um, make your strategy a success, but it is very different from a, a marketing strategy. So I just wanna make sure that we're all on the same page before we dive in. All right, creating impactful customer-led strategies. All right, like I said, we're gonna talk about 10 attributes today that will help you to um, develop a cohesive marketing strategy, customer-led marketing strategy. Six of these elements are strategy attributes, and four of them are what we call enabler attributes. I'll go through them quickly now, but then I'll also talk, we'll break them down a little bit. So the first one being organizational strategy alignment, followed by having a clear segment focus with the needs of that segment identified, followed by articulating a customer value proposition, aligning the customer experience, aligning the channel mix, and embedding the, the voice of the customer. So those are our strategy attributes. Followed up, we have our enabler attributes. Having the required people and capabilities to be able to make all of this happen. Having the aligned processes, as well as the aligned technology to be able to make this happen. And then lastly, having an agreed upon execution or roadmap for delivery. Essentially, how are we gonna make this happen? Because a lot of times when you're making changes to your marketing strategy, it has to be um, rolled out over time. It may not be something you can do immediately. All right, so let's dive into these. Like I said, we're gonna talk a little bit about each one of these, but feel free, if you have a question, feel free to stop me. I'm more than willing to, um, to have a little bit deeper conversation if something doesn't make sense. 
Um, but given our time, I know we're going to have to go over these fairly quickly. So the first one being organizational strategy and, and alignment. What's most important about this from a marketing strategy perspective is that your marketing strategy is in alignment with your organizational strategy. If you are articulating a particular brand proposition to your customer, but this is not aligned with your C-suite, or your C-suite is willing to back you up to um, commit the resources and their money to, to, uh, to articulate that brand proposition, then you're gonna have a really hard time. In addition to that, it's not just aligning with the C-suite, but also aligning with the other business units of your firm, right? So if you have a customer service team and you have not clearly articulated or you have not been transparent with this customer service team on the value proposition that you want to share with your customers, then you're gonna have some issues with that as well, right? All right, next we have a clear segment focus with the needs identified. I think someone over here, we talked about it, said having a targeted segment um, focus is very important. And I know we all hear this a lot and it is really important. Um, you know, I love that Seth talked about yesterday not having, not going after the masses, but really trying to segment out and focus on who your customer is. And I think one element of this, while it is very important, a lot of times people feel like um, or teams feel like, okay, we have to go after exactly one customer because this is who we've segmented out, right? That 12 to 14 year old girl, that's who we're going after. That's not necessarily the case. You can have um, different slices of the pie. You can, ha you can have different um, types of customers, but you are gonna have to develop a different sort of strategy for those different types of customers, right? You might be able to sell the same product to um, a 15-year-old girl that you sell to a 35-year-old woman, but you might have to go about that um, a little bit differently in how you articulate that brand proposition, as well as what channels you're, you're getting to that customer in, right? Um, so you, you wanna make sure that you have a clear segment identified, as well as the needs of that segment um, articulated. Following up after that, you wanna articulate the customer value proposition. I can't, um, focus on this enough, having a good customer value proposition to be able to articulate that customer why they should come to you as opposed to your competitor. This is hugely important because um, if you can't tell them from a brand perspective why they should come to you over your competitor, if you can't tell them here are the experiences, here is the product, here is the um, the experience that you're going to have getting this product, then they're just going to go to your competitor, right? The only thing you're going to be able to focus on is price. And in addition to this, when you're articulating this customer um, value proposition, this is also where you can start thinking about your value pricing as well. Whether or not you're going to go after a customer with value pricing or you're going to go after a customer from a cost-based pricing perspective. If you want to think about value-based pricing, if you want to have a higher um, pricing pinpoint, you have to articulate the value proposition for your customer based on this. Closely following that, you have to align your customer experience based on that value proposition. If you're making a brand promise to a customer, then you want to make sure that the experiences that that customer has, and I know we hear a lot, we hear a lot about this, but you wanna make sure that the experience that that customer has is closely aligned to that articulated customer value proposition. Because what's gonna happen? If it's not, if they can get the same experience from your competitor, they're just gonna to go to your competitor, right? So. Um, also, you wanna make sure that you have an aligned channel mix. Um, making sure that the experience that your customer is getting can be from an omni-channel approach. And one thing I like to point out here, um, your omni-channel vision or your omni-channel strategy from your aligned channel mix, while it may be omni-channel, it might not, it doesn't necessarily have to be all channel. A lot of times what happens is um, marketers tend to think I've got to be everywhere all the time to look to be able to connect to my customer. You don't have to be everywhere all the time, but you do have to identify those places where your 
targeted customer is. And if you have different segments of customers, you have to identify where those different segments are, right? The other thing to think about from an aligned channel mix perspective is the economics of your channel mix. So what's it gonna cost you to be able to get in a particular channel? And what's the ROI coming from that channel? It might cost you a little bit more to say, have advertisements on TV, right? Might take it, might cost you a little bit more. But if you get an ROI from that that's bigger than what you can get from an ad on Facebook, and I know those are amazing, then you need to think about how you can incorporate that and show the return that you can get from something like that. It's not always just lock and step with what your competitors are doing is the point I'm trying to make here. And lastly, actually let me go back, lastly, embedding the voice of the customer. I know we hear a lot about this, embedding the voice of the customer, and this is really important. So um, from a channel perspective, being able to um, enhance two-way communication with your customer and actually listening to them. There is, as a, as a customer myself, and I know we're all, while we're all marketers, we also are customers, right? The biggest thing, the easiest way to lose your, your customers is to embed a, a, a voice of the customer into, into your channels and then not listen to that customer, not respond to that customer. The thing I hate most is when I have an experience and I call, uh, maybe I've had a bad experience with a particular company, right? And I call them and I say, hey, you know, I had a bad experience, X, Y, Z happened, and they tell me, I am so sorry. And then they do nothing about it, right? That's like the worst. That is the easiest way that you can lose a customer. So you wanna make sure that you're embedding the voice of the customer and also listening to that customer as well. To go along with that, um, listening to that customer, you wanna, when we start talking about enabler attributes, you wanna make sure that you have the re required people and capabilities to be able to actually make changes based on that customer feedback, right? So if a customer gives you feedback and says, hey, I had a bad experience because of X, Y, Z, have you been transparent with all of your employees of the firm and enabled them to be able to make an experience better for th that particular customer based on the value proposition that you're giving them? So you see, all of these things are starting to line up together, right? Not only that, but you wanna make sure that they have the skills and capability to deliver on that brand promise that you're telling your customer. Next, you wanna make sure that you have the aligned uh, processes. And this goes back a little bit to what I was just saying a second ago about, do you have the ability to make changes? If your customer gives you feedback, do you have it built into your system where you can make changes, where you can um, enhance your processes for that particular customer based on their feedback. That's crucial and very, very important. Um, as well as your process metrics and reporting. Do you have the ability to be able to look at how you're doing with your customers? Are you looking at that ROI? Are you actually um, making sure that you're focused on that? Next, in, um, in alignment with that, having the aligned technology. Do you have the right systems to be able to connect to your customers, to know who they are? From um, when I think about a channel perspective, are you having the right technology to be able to, de to deliver the same experience on various different platforms? Or deliver the same experience to your customer um, no matter where they are? Are they in your store? Are they online? Are you, do you have the right technology to be able to deliver that? And I'll go back to another example. Um, when I am a customer, one of the things that bothers me the most, and, and I know it's technology disruption, um, but one of the things that bothers me the most is when I see something really cool that I love to buy and I click on it and um, then I have to fill out all of my information, right? And I'm sure we've all been there. You have to fill out all of your information, you have to fill out your shipping information, you have to fill out your, your billing information, and then I've got to get up, walk away, go get my credit card, come back. It's just so many steps. All of a sudden, you've, you've lost your customer, right? They might not buy because of all those various different steps, unless 
maybe they really, really want it, but that could be something that could deter them. So do you have the right technology in place to help um, that point of sale? Do you have the right technology in place to help that experience for that customer to make sure that they're driving the experience that they're looking for? And lastly, do you have an agreed upon execution or roadmap for delivery? Um, your customer intimacy strategy roadmap, thinking about all the different touch points that you have with your customer, is that clearly outlined and do you have a strategy on how you're going to grow that and make that happen over a one, three, five year period, right? Because when you're implementing a new marketing strategy, it might not be something that can be implemented overnight, but do you have a clear, clearly articulated roadmap that's been worked out with all of the members of your company, whether it be C-suite or if you're a small firm, um, whoever that might be that can help you um, implement those changes over time. So those are the 10 elements that we see as making a really strong organizational marketing strategy. These 10 elements, I think, work really well together to articulate the brand proposition and, or the brand, um, yeah, brand proposition for your particular marketing strategy and can enable you to actually get that um, strategy in front of your customers and help your customers have the right experiences. So a lot of times what happens with companies is that they will focus on one or two elements of this, right? They'll focus on, well, I wanna focus on customer experience this year. I wanna focus on getting into more digital channels. And that's all good, but if it's not cohesive with a holistic strategy, if it's not focused on having the right enabler attributes behind it to be able to um, get that particular strategy up and going, you're gonna have a really hard time and you're gonna see a lot of your um, strategy suffer because of some of that. All right, really quickly, we'll talk a little bit about the determining and measuring return on investment. Well, we, won't, we don't unfortunately have time to go through all of return on investment. We'll talk, the major things that I wanted to talk about from a strategic perspective is making sure that your ROI and mes uh, measurements are focused on your target audience. A lot of times what we hear um, from a consulting perspective is someone will say, well, we got um, all of these clicks or we got, um, you know, we got a number of customers that opened up our video, right? That's, that's great and that's awesome. But really being able to think about, okay, how am I measuring from a target audience perspective what that is, right? Because a lot of times it may be somebody different that's opening and closing your, 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 um, your videos or opening and closing or clicking on something, right? So you wanna make sure that that's reaching your target audience. You also wanna think about from a um, marketing tactical, is it, specific to a particular tactic, or is it specific to your marketing strategy as a whole? How are you rolling it all up together to be able to think about your ROI? And then lastly, from a KPI perspective, are you choosing the right KPIs up front to be able to um, get to your data on the back end that you need to be able to determine that? All right, and then lastly, identifying when to change your strategy. So. We talked a little bit about a marketing strategy being um, something that you're looking at long term, right? Not necessarily just um, your marketing plan that can change over time, but your marketing strategy is your long term to get to that particular goal. So um, if your marketing strategy is a medium to long term length, say it's three to five years to get to that particular goal, then this is not something that you want to change on a regular basis. This is not something that you want to say, oh, I'm just gonna, we're gonna go after different customers now. We're gonna go after, um, go after a different market now, right? The only things that really should change your marketing strategy outside of you reaching that goal and making some determined changes would be either market disruption, something from a technological advancement happening. Um, your customers are, or excuse me, your customers, your competitors are coming in. Say you have a new competitor, they're coming in and doing something 
newer, faster, quicker, better than you are, then it's time to start rethinking what you're doing as well, or new economic or political factors that are coming in. Um, these are really the major things that you should think about uh, making changes to your strategy. But from a strategic perspective, this is something that you should really think holistically about and making, um, making a strong strategy up front so you're not trying to make changes to it on a regular basis. So that being said, um, I know we went through a lot of stuff really, really quickly. Um, so I would love to take some questions if you guys have any. If anybody has any questions, raise your hand and I'll run the mic to you. How does uh, competitive analysis fit into this? Yeah, so it's important to think about, um, actually let me jump back to, so it's important to think about your competitor analysis um, and to think about what your competitors are doing. But um, from that standpoint, I would say it's, it's an upfront analysis, but you wanna think about your value proposition that you're offering your customers. So when you think about what your competitors are offering, you wanna say upfront, okay, here's the value proposition that I can offer my customers that's different from my competitors and that be the basis of your strategy that you're developing. So it's not necessarily that you're saying, um, my competitors are going after this segment, so I'm gonna change my segment. That's not necessarily the case. But it is, you do wanna think about what your clearly articulated value proposition to those customers are, because if you're Say your competitor is going solely on a cost-based pricing model. You don't necessarily have to follow suit. You may want to do a value-based pricing model, right? So if you're going to do a value-based pricing model, you want to think about the value that you are giving to that customer from an experience perspective, from a product or service perspective, all of that being, being holistic. Hi. Um, Hi. <clears throat> I really had a two-part question. One okay. is, this is obviously a very comprehensive approach. Mm -hmm. um, could you please give us an indication of what portion or how, what percentage of your customers or clients actually go through this comprehensive approach? And the second question is, can you give us an example of one or two who are doing this really well? Um, so as far as um, the number or the far as the number of customers that are doing this, um, I can say that this is an approach that we can recommend to a number of our um, clients in that we do really recommend looking at things holistically, not necessarily just um, one piece of the puzzle, if you will, not necessarily just the customer experience piece of the puzzle, because the customer experience piece of the puzzle is closely linked to being able to have the right people and capabilities to be able to, to deliver that customer experience, right? So when you think about it, so this is primarily looking at it from a holistic perspective. A lot of times what um, companies will do is they'll focus on the customer experience and then they'll say, oh shoot, you know what? We don't have the right X, Y, Z to be able to make that happen. Let's jump on that, right? But from our perspective, from um, consulting, we try to take a holistic approach in sharing that with our clients to help them to see up front, hey, if you're gonna focus on this customer experience, if this is something from a strategic perspective that you want to share with your clients, or excuse me, share with your customers, then you have to enable it with the right technology. You have to enable it with the right um, people and processes in place, right? Um, Unfortunately, the second part of your question, and I apologize, but um, I won't be able to speak specifically to um, clients that, or, or companies that we see doing this really well. One of the things, um, one of the um, hindrances to my job is that we can't speak to particular companies, and I apologize about that. Um, but I would say if you're looking at companies that you feel like 
um, you see a good value proposition for and you see that they have good customer experiences, I guarantee you that they have the processes, the technology, um, the C-suite organizational alignment to be able to back it up. So I apologize, I can't answer the second part of your question. So. Great.